guys! Welcome back to Let's Play Grandia 2! I screwed up the recording here. Uh, all the video recorded fine, but I forgot to change the settings, and so I recorded from a microphone that was not connected to the computer. So, basically what I was talking about here, we're just going to go over this. Gravity is a spell that moves enemies together. I will demonstrate this later on in the video. Uh, snooze and Craze are uh, status effects that will be very useful going forward. Um, I'm going to try and demonstrate them in a boss fight unsuccessfully, and then I will demonstrate them afterward more successfully. Anyway, yeah, so we've made our way through the Baked Plains at the end of the last episode, and we've come here to... Camera? Can, can, can you zoom a little bit, camera? Can, can pan a little bit? You know? No? No? Okay, fine. Don't pan. Of course he is. I, I think... I, how old is he? I think he's like 10 or something like that. I, I can't remember for sure. I know he's young. Uh, but I don't, I don't think he's like, you know, under 10. Maybe he is. Anyway, I'll let this speak for itself. And for some reason, the audio for all the cutscenes is really, really loud. I'm not entirely sure why, but I'll probably be mostly quiet for the majority of the cutscenes during the game. Uh, just because otherwise I have to play around with the audio too much and the, uh, the impact of the emotion behind the cutscene gets diminished so that you can actually hear what the hell I'm saying when you probably just want to see you know, what's going on. And yes, they still have not come up with a better name than the Battle of Good versus Evil. Kind of pathetic, but still kind of funny. And what do we see over here? How are we getting across this thing anyway? Apparently airships in this game look absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, kind of. It's sad. Doesn't one of the uh, one of the airships in Final Fantasy X or X-2 kind of look like that? I don't know. It's kind of weird. Anyway, it's called the Skyway. We ride across it to go across the Karana Cliffs. Now, even though the main game itself has been remastered, all the cutscenes are basically just being thrown in there as they were before. They didn't redo any of the cutscenes. So you may be able to see some inconsistencies or some lower quality, uh, lower uh, resolution images for stuff, stuff like that. And of course, Sky is awesome with his snarky attitude. Apparently in the, uh, the Japanese version, I was reading on a forum that uh, Sky didn't have that snarky attitude and Ryudo, he was only slightly a dick but, you know, not the complete asshole that he comes across as this game. But if you think about what we've experienced so far, how interesting would this game be without those two characters acting the way they were? They're the greatest source of comedy we've had in this game so far. So I actually really like it. It's one of the reasons why I like, you know, the creative license. I love that for, uh, you know, for dubbing video games, dubbing anime, uh, fan fiction even. Of course, there's crap in, in any medium, but at least here with this, you know, this interest, you know, the uh, the creative license to be able to change things and look at things and create something new. I love that. One of the reasons why I think this game stands up as well as it does, even, you know, 10 years plus later. But we're going to take a nap here because the plot says we're going to take a nap here. Oh, right. We have our little talk before we do that. Watch your step on the way to the little girl's room. Just don't fall off the edge, please. That, that would make for a very bad uh, setup. Anyway, we can talk to all our people here. We're going to stop at this place, Lilligu, Lilig, I don't know how to pronounce that. On the way to the St. Heim Papal State. Of course, that's where the cathedral is, and that's where we're bringing Elena. And those cliffs are pretty damn incredible. Why is the world in such a pitiful state? Been split in half by the granite cliffs. 
So I'm not sure. They, they say it's the continent, and then sometimes they say it's the whole thing. So I'm not sure, you know, the whole uh, planet. I'm, I'm not sure which one it's supposed to be. Anyway, let's learn about the battle versus good and evil again. Balmar tried to take the light from people, and so began the battle of good and evil. Battle's end, Lord Granite's sword, which he raised to cut down Valmar, went right through Valmar and into the earth, creating a huge fissure across the land. That's how the Granicus came to be. It's an interesting story, for sure. Think if you had such a big sword, you know, enough to carve out a continent, you'd be a little more careful about where he'd drop it. it reminds me of Dragon Ball Z and the, uh, the Z sword. Just remember watching Gohan drop that all the time. So, Lord Granis had not defeated Valmar, just think what the world would have come to. Yeah, you, you already say it's in bad shape, well, I guess it would be in worse shape now, wouldn't it? Do you feel, Miss Millennia? Hmm, it's an interesting question. Yes, you are cursed by Millennia, the wings of Valmar, apparently. Darkness warps a person's soul. If someone is truly caught by darkness, that person will have no future. And of course, Ryudo, because he has to respond in kind. Shadier by the moment. For some reason, I don't see sunshine and puppy dogs in the near future. I think he's cluing into the fact that this is a JRPG. But uh, yeah, we, we don't just get, you know, the great comedy. We do get a serious storyline with very emotional scenes going forward. So stay tuned for that. It doesn't start off right away. Um, you know, for the most part, but we definitely get into some really effective emotional scenes as it goes on. Of course you do. And we're on repeating dialogue, so let's go take a nap. Ah, crickets. Your body... What the hell? <laughs> Having a nightmare. A huge tongue-like thing was coiled around me and was... Div That's kind of gross. And creepy as all hell. Wait a minute. All the foley stopped. There's no crickets. Yeah, definitely too quiet. They cut out all the audio. Well, not all Shh. the audio. Something's here. <gasps> and all of a sudden the tent disappeared. <laughs> oh, I love anime and video games for the stupid stuff like that. I'll teach you a lesson. Hello! And of course, based on his appearance, what do you think his name is? Beast Man. Yeah, they're pretty dirt simple with some of their stuff. Anyway, I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to be able to comment, you know, readily like I was in the, you know, the actual game just because I don't know what I was doing in this battle. I, I only did it half an hour ago and then I just realized as I was you know, checking up on the file that I screwed up and didn't record my my voice. But uh, basically what I'm trying to do here is use Snooze to move his icon on the IP gauge back to the, the wait sign. And of course we gotta use cancel attacks at all, if at all possible. Now, this won't be successful, but uh, the point I was trying to make here will be made in a battle after the boss fight here. But yeah, the icon there is what will happen is if the status effect of snooze or craze hits, the icon will drop all the way back to wait, and that's kind of the point. And it's only 5 MP, hits all enemies, very effective. Um, I will probably be making more use of it going forward, I just hadn't really uh, started working on it yet. 
but for the most part, we want to do as much damage as possible against this guy. I uh, do note that he only will target Ryudo in this fight. Um, he has identified something with Ryudo, and that's what he's uh, going after. So, uh, okay. Ten say can slash. But yeah, with our increased strength, we do quite a bit of damage with that now, which of course is very effective. Now he's going to use uh, an ability here called uh, Beast Fang Cut, uh, so he's charging up for it. It's a cancel ability, so he's going to be able to do some IP damage with it and cancel, of course, if it just you know if it times right, which in this case it won't. I have no idea what I was doing in the menus. I have no idea what I was doing. We're just going to try some other damage here. Pretty much in any uh, boss fight in the early parts of the game, you're going to want to spend most of your SP and your MP or whatever, depending Damn, on what type of fight hurts. it is, to deal as much damage oh, as possible, as fast as possible, so that uh, you take less damage overall from the boss. But since he's only going to target one, you don't have to worry about Golden healing hammer. the other two. You basically just have to Crash. heal with Ryudo or heal Ryudo with somebody else. Uh, our healing spells at this point in the game really aren't that uh, that much leveled up. They're they're kind of weak. So and because Ryudo himself has uh, the increased item ability, so he goes faster with that. All I have to do is use a simple item, and it acts pretty much instantly, and I'm healed up. So, very effective way of keeping him healed in this fight. You don't really need to worry about too much else. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, pretty much council attacks, especially on, on a boss. You know, anything single targeting, anything that does IP damage, anything that cancels, uh, anything that they're, they happen to be weak against. This guy's not weak against any particular element, so don't worry about that. Here goes my impact bomb. Since, since I screwed up that, I, I had a list of other things I wanted to uh, work on there. Now, there are stat buffs in Crash! in battles, and those stat buffs are from particular spells there, and also from some items. They're, for the most part, not particularly useful, though yeah. there are a couple notes yeah. I'd like to make about it. Um, there are the two different stats. There's your axe stat, which is based on your agility, and then there's the move stat, uh, based on your speed. There you go. Now there is a spell I think it's called Freeze in the game that I don't think we've learned yet. And what it does is it lowers the speed, you know, the movement speed of the enemy by I think it's one point. I think it hits multiples. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it might hit one. If it hits one, chances are it reduces it by two. But if and Ten minus five and plus five, flash. of course, are the uh, the limits plus or minus on those spells or on those stat raising abilities and if you drop an enemy by minus five which again is you know the lowest they will you go they won't be able to attack at all until they've increased their uh, stat a little bit because they're they basically they can't move they can still use yeah. spells or specials or stuff like that but they cannot use yeah. any normal attacks here goes my impact bomb now, I'll talk about gravity a little more later. It's also on my list. Um, you can stop enemies from being able to hit you by making their, um, oh, what is it? Their stamina run out. And I'll show yeah. that off in a subsequent fight. But uh, uh, Craze, which creates confusion. It's a spell we haven't learned me. yet. And Snooze will reset the IP gauges. Again, I'll go over that in a subsequent fight as well. Snooze is a very good spell because it uh, only costs 5 MP, whereas Nightmare Ball, not you, not him. which is an ability that what? What is the meaning of this? Elena Why'd has, you attack me? costs more. called me the same smell as that of the villain who destroyed my village. The smell of that scum. Drives me crazy. I must find him. This Malthus. What? He said Malthus. Ryudo. Are we supposed to know who this is? Another very I short smell like flashback. Is that true? Hmm. You. You know. 
this. I might. Clever guy. He's not revealing information I to see. the guy who attacked him. Uh, Probably smart. Your smell does not have the dank smell of death. I had forgotten myself. Wait, what? Hey, you! My bro- Your brother! Is Melfus alive? Well... Melfus is a demon man. Bringer of ruination. My name is Merrick. Okay. I'm sorry for attacking you. He seems more intelligent than, you know, the initial beast man image gave him credit for. Hmm. Weirdo. Interesting. Demon man? Bringer of ruination? He's just a common murderer. Can't still be alive. I never thought I'd have to relive that nightmare again in such a place. What is all this? Who is this Morphus? He's. He's my brother. And that's all you're getting for now. We will go into more about his background later on, but uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of interesting stuff to the plot that uh, we'll be able to learn going forward. You know about you know Ryudo, his past, why he gets these flashbacks, why he doesn't want to relive them, why he recognized the darkness as they keep calling it uh, when uh, Elena was surrounded by it. Here, I'm just running back to go hit the save point here. Got to make sure I'm healed up. I think there's only three items in this area, so we're going to go collect those, and then we'll call her an episode. There uh, are a couple of battles I will be showing off as well, just because I want to show off some different strategies. And if you take try and take a look at what's going on around the edge here, you can't really see all that much. Uh, not when we're not in cutscene mode. But yeah, I was talking about things like... Um, Nightmare Ball, which is the second uh, move that Elena can learn. It's also a sleep attack. This one also does damage, but it costs SP instead of MP and costs a lot more special points that are, uh, yes, but special coins to level up than snooze costs magic coins. Sleep. So take a look down on the IP gauge and look at all of the icons down there. If they get hit with the sleep status, they all reset back to wait. So that's very, very effective if you want to uh, try and, you know, use that to prevent yourself from taking any damage in a fight. If you watch how the rest of this fight goes, you'll notice that they take quite a while to wake up and they can't hurt you while they're sleeping. Uh, confusion does the same thing, um, but you're using confusion more to reset their IP gauge back to wait than you are about absolutely stopping them, like with sleep, because Confuse isn't very reliable as a status effect. But yeah, you can see they've been sitting there in sleep most of this fight. You can avoid taking damage, and because Snooze only costs 5 MP, it uh, is very effective at, you know, reducing the amount of damage you do, the amount of MP you're going to spend in battle, and it just makes battles all around safer for you or, you know, your characters so you're not dying. So that's another strategy going forward that you can make use of. And then you can just use normal attacks to finish off the enemies instead of, you know, spending lots of MP and stuff like that. Gotta work even harder. Now the second ability I'll be showing off, since I don't think I have the ability to get craze and I don't really want to use it anyway because snooze is, as far as I'm concerned, all around better. If I can find out where I'm going, that would be beneficial. There we go. And this is gravity. We will show this off in the next fight here and what it does. And then after that, we will work on Howl Slash because that's what I really want to level up because I need uh, Rowan to be able to do some more damage as well, especially, you know, all targeting damage or, you know, most targeting area of effect. Now here I got initiative on them, so they're already grouped tightly together. But if I didn't, then uh, they would be spaced further apart. And that's where gravity really shines. And it's probably not the best battle to demonstrate it, but I will demonstrate it in other battles too. This was just kind of the, the start of it to show it off in the same video where I was already talking about it. 
As you can see, it's got a very wide area, and so anyone in within that area will be uh, moved closer to hey, the target stick enemy. Together. You'll notice they don't move a lot with this one because they're already grouped so close, but all of the enemies will focus around the other one, allowing you two things. You notice the, uh, the teardrops there, the sweat drops. That means that all of those guys were attempting to use normal attacks, but they've all been prevented from doing that because they were moved uh, by the gravity spell. So gravity, very effective, again, nice, for preventing flame. damage. It also moves them all close together so you can hit them with a targeting spell and take them right out. In this case, I probably could have done that right from the beginning of the fight, I but I was trying to demonstrate something. But yeah, the uh, the success rate of sleep or snooze and the success rate of nightmare ball, which is uh, Elena's ability, are different. Uh, snooze, I think, is something around 70 percent. Don't quote me on that one, but I think it's right around there. And Elena's nightmare ball uses or I think it's about 100 percent, assuming they're not immune. So there's all the items we can get here. And I think I've managed to portray most of the information that I was trying to in the original recording. But uh, yeah, this is leading to the continents. So that's the end of the dungeon. We didn't make a lot of progress today, but I wanted to at least go over some of the basic things, you know, the information like that. Now, shell armor can actually be equipped on Rowan, so we're going to build up his defense since it's so low, and then give you a little bit more defense as well. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much all there is there. We want to keep everyone's uh, strength or their defense, you know, around the same so they don't just get annihilated. But that's pretty much all the time I have for today. Next time we will continue to the world map and into the next city. That's all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.